Marjorie Taylor Greene used the 9-11 attacks to antagonize Ilhan Omar, a Muslim congresswoman, because apparently Islamophobia still appeals to her base. Now, I've never had a whole lot of respect for racists, which on its own I know is not the hottest of takes, but I think for me it's more that racist people just come off as unintelligent, uneducated, or just underexposed to the general population or what this world has to offer. Again, probably not a super hot take, but I think it's a good jumping off point for the rest of this story. So there was a plane full of people, and some of them decided to take the rest of them to church against their will, singing Christian music in a place where literally nobody could escape from it. Nothing happened to these people, of course, but when Ilhan Omar made a comment about, you know, what would have happened if these were Muslim people praying on a plane, Marjorie Taylor Greene took the opportunity to very predictably and unimaginatively, I might add, make a reference to the 9-11 attacks, unequivocally aligning over 2 billion Muslims in the world with a handful of terrorists. Low-hanging fruit, to say the least, but she's got a racist base to tend to. A brown-skinned woman in a headscarf, I know, is very terrifying, at least for supporters of somebody like Marjorie Taylor Greene. It's a social media post from Marjorie Taylor Greene, and she is holding an assault rifle over the words, squad's worst nightmare. There are cynics who would rather see us divided on racial, ethnic, gender, and religious lines because it suits their political agenda. But I believe, as Americans, we should stand united against all forms of bigotry. Marjorie Greene, who, like all the rest, voted against this, tweeted, I will be voting no on Ilhan's submission bill. I... <sighs> Phobia is an extreme or irrational fear. It's not irrational to fear Islamic terrorism or a religion that states its goal is world domination or the death of infidels. Still, there's something about religious freedom in this country that doesn't seem to be sinking in with the Christian right. And for a group that's bleeding supporters, they've just decided to force their reliefs on a population that doesn't seem to want them. Over the past 10 years, the number of Christians in this country has declined by over 12% and the number of people choosing to not affiliate themselves with any religion has increased by 11%. Today, approximately 30% of American adults don't identify with any religion. Now, despite all this, we keep seeing political candidates with strong religious ties to Christianity specifically, making light of the separation of church and state upon which this country was founded. We've already been dealing with this in relation to anti-abortion efforts and anti-LGBTQ legislation that's being pushed. But some are looking to go even further, saying that we shouldn't have a separation of church and state at all. And again, this is not something that's supported by the majority of Americans. Actually, there was one time I was working here with a local Democratic group here in Houston, and I was interviewing a candidate for mayor. He was running as a Democrat, but he was definitely one of those dino types. And I remember I was taking notes while I was interviewing him. And I eventually just had like a running tally on my paper of how many times he mentioned Jesus or God or the Lord, etc. in his response to any of the questions. None of the questions, by the way, had anything to do with religion. Then he said he wanted to have prayers here at City Hall. So when I asked him about the separation of church and state, he just said, that's not really a thing. Who knew? I don't think I need to tell you about the hypocrisy of the religious right. You know what it is. You probably know somebody who embodies this exact brand of hypocrisy. I know a guy with a wall hanging of Jesus clutching an American flag with some Bible verse on there talking about don't fear, just have faith. I'm paraphrasing, I didn't memorize the Bible. But as far as hypocrisy goes, these are the same people who are terrified of Muslims coming into this country, taking over the government, and imposing Sharia law onto everyone. Newsflash, we're already here. We've been here. And even though I told you I don't self-identify as a Muslim, as far as the government and, you know, races see me, that's what I am. Islam is the second largest religion in the world and the third largest religion in this country with nearly 3.5 million Muslims living here. It's the fastest growing religion in the world and unless you live in some backwood, you're almost certain to have them in your community. You probably haven't even noticed them. The only people talking about Sharia law around here in any kind of serious or organized way are politicians pandering and fear-mongering to a religious base with racism and bigotry. And the only people hawking anything resembling a religious law on a secular population are the members of the Christian right. Don't fear, just have faith. 
I'll leave you with some encouraging news though. Marjorie Taylor Greene, along with her cohorts like Matt Gates, Lauren Boebert, and Madison Cawthorn is bleeding money, spending more than she's bringing in. So maybe this sort of cheap rhetoric is finally getting old. Maybe.